There. Alright. Well, welcome to the Bearded Nomad Van Life, Bearded Nomad Relic Hunter. Um figure I'd get on here before right quick before I go to bed. Um just wanted to share with you all. Um all my subscribers out there, my long long time followers. Um I'm back in full time van life. Was uh really looking forward, you know, was happy about a change in my life. And unfortunately, I guess I got too happy too fast, like always. And I uh, guess I tried too hard and tried to give too much and love too much. And it went south. So that's all said and done and over with. So back to full-time van life it is. And while, you know, of course... Dealing with that, you know, and trying to work through the hurt and the emotions and the mental state that it put me in. Um, to add salt, to add salt in the wound, um, which I mean, it's not, it wasn't unexpected, but, uh, I think as I've stated before, my mother was battling stage four ovarian perennial cancer. And uh, a while back she chose quality over quantity um, due to the fact that the chemo treatments and everything were making her terribly ill. Even though they gave her medication to keep her from getting ill, it still made her deathly ill to where she couldn't get out of bed for seven days after her treatment. And I don't blame her. She said to heck with that. Um, and I respected her. I respect her decision to, you know, I always will. Quality over quantity. She went through more than I would have. If, if, I, if I found out I had cancer, I wouldn't get any treatment at all. I just, I'd live my life until, until it takes me. Just like I'm doing with my heart failure, you know. There's no fix, no cure. But even if there was, I don't know that I'd bother just in case, you know, I think I'd just rather enjoy the lot, the time I got left, you know, cause we all, we all got a time to go. And the more you try to mess with that timetable, it's still going to, you're going to go when you're going to go when you're supposed to go. So, um, but yeah, she, uh, she gave up on the treatments and figured the heck with it quality over quantity. So, she had a good little run here from that point on. Um, minus, you know, having to get drain tubes put in on her lungs being, to drain, to be able to drain at home, to drain fluid off of her lungs so she could breathe, um, which was from the liquid was from the cancer. Um, you know, and a few other things that she had to go through. And, you know, it was... Not the best quality of way of living, but it was better quality than being sick. So from the chemo treatments. So after a short, good little run, um, with her faith and beliefs, the good Lord thought that it's time. That said, it's time to take her, and uh, last Wednesday was the last time she ate any food, completely lost appetite, and did not eat for Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. So seven days, and on the seventh day, exactly 20 years in one day, and pretty much dead on the same time of the evening, she passed away and took her last breath 20 years, one day, exact, pretty much the same time as my father. So, um, which it was weird because prior to last evening, I spent my tape, my two days off from work, standing by her, staying by her side, staying there in the house, being there. 
Um, and I couldn't barely talk to her without breaking down in tears. And even though she wasn't responding anymore, she wasn't talking. She did get out one last I love you on Wednesday morning when I got there. And that was the last actual words that she spoke. And that was the only words that she really spoke for a cup for the last couple days. Um, but now her pain and suffering is over <clears throat> with her faith and belief system that she believed in. She's now on her way to heaven to be with my father and her parents and her sister-in-law and many other people that have gone other and my other, my dad's grand, my grand, my dad's parents, grand, my grandparents, everybody that's gone before her. She's now on her way to see them on the other side and uh, no more pain and suffering. It's weird. Like I said, I, I couldn't talk to her without breaking down completely. Like just the tears would flow and I couldn't, I couldn't stop it. If I kept trying to talk to her, the tears just wouldn't stop. And uh, when she took her last breath, and my brother went in to check on her, and I was just in there and came out, and then he went in a few a little bit later, a few minutes later, like fifteen minutes, not even fifteen minutes, and he came rushing out to grab the pulse meter thing for the finger and said, "I think she's gone." And we put the pulse meter on her finger and hit the button, and it wasn't even trying to detect the pulse because there was none, and. uh she instantly was getting cold, and her color started to change. So, called the hospice company to get to have them send a nurse out to pronounce her and, and do the death certificate. And then they called the funeral home, and they came and collected mom. And now, here in the morning, we're going to have... Uh, she only wanted a very small few people, select people, at her viewing before she goes to get cremated and we're respecting her wishes and following her instructions to the T my brother contacted all those people today and left them know once he spoke with the funeral home he then called those people and left them know that tomorrow morning is the viewing and where and then she will go off to get cremated once we find out when the internment in the cemetery is going to happen, we decided that we will put that out there to a bigger swath of people so that anybody that wants to come pay their respects can do that at the cemetery. Um, cause she didn't give any specific instructions on for that. So we just know that we're supposed to intern her at that cemetery and that's it so being that's the case that's when we'll open it up and tell more people so that other people can go pay their respects to her if they so wish and uh then we gotta continue the we started the process of cleaning out things and going through stuff in, at her townhouse today um to our, as a townhouse apartment first floor so we gotta continue to go through stuff my daughter has first dibs on on anything in the in the house that she wants besides items that that mom already had written down for who gets what um she had certain items picked out that you know my daughter gets this my daughter gets that or my my daughter her granddaughter and my brother, she wants my brother to have one thing, and then she had something for me to have. And other than that, then my daughter gets to go, through, got went through today, picked out any house items that she wants for her apartment. And uh, then the rest will be, my brother and I will work on selling furniture and stuff and and then we got to take care of, he's got it since he's the S, the, uh, 
in charge of the estate. He has to go to the courthouse and do some paperwork for to, that he's the esquire of the estate or whatever. Um, and then we can, and then he's got a, he already contacted the insurance fella that my mother had. And then uh, we'll start processing the life insurance and all that stuff that mom had for us. Um, for the for us that's listed as beneficiaries. So once all that's said and done and we get the, the townhouse apartment emptied out and turned back over to the, uh, the housing thing there. Um, once that's all squared away, then... I will work on getting back to the van life and the relic hunting and uh, the metal detecting and other any other such adventures that uh, we find ourselves going on, meaning me and all of you. Um, I appreciate those of you that have stuck around through these uh these this moment these moments of me not being very active and posting videos i appreciate it greatly um i know i'm pretty much probably never going to get monetized because i'm sure i just lost most of my viewed hours so even though i have the subscribers Getting the viewed hours, unless I start posting at least one video every day and then make it short enough so that everybody watches it in its entirety. Um, even at that rate, it's still going to take a while to get to the viewed hours that I need within 365 days to get monetized, to be able to monetize. So is monetization ever going to be a thing with this channel? I doubt it. Do I care? Not really. It would be nice. It would be cool to be monetized and be able to do as other van lifers do and just go drive around the country somewhere and post videos about my days and make a living at it. That would be great. But I don't believe that I'm meant to ever have it that easy to where I could do something I truly enjoy and make a good enough living at it to just live peacefully and in my van. So, um, yeah. <laughs> so at that rate, uh, you know, here I am, like I said before, I mean, I know I said it before this here, this is also that my kid has something and my grandchild will have an any if my shoes, if they decide to, I have any more children. This is something so that my daughter and my grandchildren and my son-in-law, future son-in-law can uh, look back on and watch and see, see me. And so they have memories, you know, and the grandkids can remember what their pop pop looks like and, you know, hear my voice and hear my laugh and, that way it doesn't feel so crappy and lonely for them like it you know, like it did for me most of my life. A lot of my grandparents passed when I was young, so very few memories of the grandparents. I have a few of each one, but that's it, you know, and at least this way, my grandchildren will have more to look back on, see me, and be able to know who their pop-pop was. So, but, uh, yeah, so bear with me all in due time here, hopefully sooner than later, uh, we'll get this channel fired back up and on a regular, uh, uploading schedule of videos. Definitely going to be a lot of metal detecting yet. Cause that's my, that's my main hobby, you know, with my heart failure and, time allotted to do to do my hobbies you know rock hounding is is definitely a, a love of my life too but you know one lo one the closest place that i had to really go get try to find nice quartz crystals is now shut down it's closed off we're not allowed there we can't dig 
you can go there, but you can't dig. And, you know, I'm not going to chance getting in trouble with the with the law and DCNR because I want to try to dig up quartz crystals. So, you know, that, that makes it where if I want to dig, if I want to go places to pay to dig, I got to drive to New York from Pennsylvania or I got to drive to Arkansas or the Carolinas, you know, or I got to go way out west. And that's just not feasible. So, yes, there's plenty of other rock hounding stuff to, to do around here in Pennsylvania. But for what interests me when it comes to rock hounding, that is something that you just can't take a 30 minute drive down the road and go to a place to do it. So, the metal detecting, I can drive five minutes from where I'm at right now. I could drive 20 minutes from where I'm at right now. I could drive. A half an hour, I could drive an hour, I could drive two hours, but within an hour's, you know, within less than an hour drive or 30 minute drive, I've got a plethora of places that I can go and swing my metal detector and find stuff. And at least that way, I know when I'm digging, I know I'm looking, I know I'm going to find a target because I hear it on the detector with crystal rock pounding, crystal digging. It's all just straight up. You just start digging and hope you find something. And I don't have enough time left in my life to dedicate too much time to that since I don't have the great locations. If the great locations were, if I was in New York, living in New York, and, my, and the great locations for Herkimer's were right in my backyard because I lived in that county, great. That would be awesome, you know, but I don't live there, so... Metal detecting is my big hobby, and that's going to be a lot of what's on this channel. That's why it's a combo. That's why I comboed it together. Um, and van life. Um, come September, we will be we'll be having a great adventure driving to Indiana for the Midwest Silver Shootout, which is a seated metal detecting hunt that I will be camping on site for. Friday, Saturday night, and Saturday all day, and in and into the nighttime. There's a nighttime hunt that goes till like eleven thirty, quarter quarter of midnight. Um, so that'll be a whole day of metal detecting and lots of silver coins that they're going to be putting in the ground for us to find, and a lot of cool silver coins. So. Even though it's a seated hunt and I'm not real big on seated hunts, I would like to, I just wanted to do at least one once, once in my metal detecting, you know, hobby time frame. So I'm going to give it a whirl, see how I like it. Maybe if I do like it more, I'll do more of them. If not, I'll just uh, go back to attempting more private property permissions. Um, as of right now, I've... I did put in a little bit of time and try and tried to get a whole bunch of, you know, permissions for properties, old properties with old stone houses. And unfortunately I got shot down on all of them. Um, it seems to me that too many people judge on the appearance. So uh, here I am with my beard while well, I'm not shaving my beard, just so somebody feels safer to have me metal detect their property. Um, I, I have the clothes that I have and that's it. I'm not going to go out and buy a suit or, a, you know, some preppy style clothing outfit just to go knock on doors. I'm not doing that. If people can't stop being judgmental over someone's appearance and I'm not, it's not like I'm that cruddy looking. Do I look that cruddy looking and scary to you guys? Do I look scary? I don't think I'm scary. I'm just a bearded fella. I'm a big teddy bear. But, you know, it seems people can't handle teddy bears. People don't like teddy bears anymore. Um, lovable teddy bears are not the number one wanted thing anymore. So that goes for a lot multitude of different angles of that, too, of life, too. Um, not just the metal detecting permission, trying to get permissions. Um, but, you know... I am who I am and I'm not changing who I am just to try to get permission. So I'm giving it a hiatus here with everything else going on. 
that when this is all said and done and I get back to it, maybe I'll give it another whirl to start going and knocking on some more doors and hope that maybe people say yes. Um, if not, I ain't going to take too many more no's before I just stop asking. And, uh, of course, I do have a, pro a property permission, though, through my uh, future son-in-law. I got a I got a property that has the old Union Canal a section, a uh, part of the old Union Canal, ran ran through that property back in the 1800s or so. Yeah, 17, 18, 1800s. Um, so, you know, it's uh. That ought to be a good. That ought to be a good time to hunt there, and I should have access to that because now that hunting season's over, he said it. Uh, I should be able to get in there shortly, and uh, got a lot of acreage there. So, you know, I'll be that'll be taken up and keeping me busy. Um, but yeah, so just bear with me. Like I said, uh, don't go nowhere. Don't leave. Don't unsubscribe. Um. I promise I'm not going, I'm not gone. Um, and I will be back. Just got to deal with life and some of this, uh, the, the cards that life has dealt me. I must deal with that first. I know you, I know you guys all understand. That's, that's the best part about van life channels and, and the subscribers that stick around. You guys are fully understanding and cool and very, I appreciate that. I really do. Um, the other week, actually, right after the first hit that I took in the uh, in the heart, um, subscriber was actually, he went by the laundromat I was at and stopped in and was talking with me. And uh, we had a nice chat. And uh, so it was good to, nice to meet you, Doug, face to face, finally. And uh, so... You guys make it make it worthwhile for me to keep doing this. Um, just knowing that you guys enjoy the videos or, you know, at least hopefully you do. Um, I know it's not as cool as some of the Van Life channels out there. But, you know, my big thing is metal detecting. So, for those of you that enjoy the metal detecting videos, I do have some footage I just never got around to getting it together and trying to get it, getting it onto my phone and over to onto my phone from my movie. Just haven't got around to that yet because of everything going on. So, and I do have a lot of pictures and stuff from my trip to Vegas. Um, the night I got back from Vegas is when everything fell apart in my world. And, uh, so I just never really got around to doing that because, I wasn't ready to go back through that and process all those photos and videos to make videos for YouTube from that. Uh, I'm not even sure if I will. It's, I'm not sure if it's something that I can. Uh, I'm sure if it's something I can handle going going back through to to put together. I might just. Uh, I don't know. Might just keep that keep all that stuff in the back burner. And uh, maybe at a later date, I'll be able to share that with you guys. But, uh, just know I appreciate you guys hanging around and waiting for me and putting up with my uh, minimal videos getting posted, uploaded. But, uh, I will be back. So, just bear with me as soon as I get all everything squared away and see where I sit, see where I sit financially and everything else after all this process of everything with the funeral and all that stuff. Um, we'll go from there. Okay. So stay tuned for more. I will be back with videos here soon. Um, I appreciate y'all. Remember fight for love, not hate. Um, be kind to others, be kind to yourself. I should take that own advice. I've been beating the heck out of myself 
thinking that I'm the, you know, that I'm the problem. Maybe I am. I don't know. Or maybe I, I probably am, I guess. I don't, I, am. I didn't know that <laughs> being, didn't know giving unconditional love was, a, was a, was a problem or a bad thing, but I don't know. Who knows? But hey, who? Be kind to of yourself. Be kind to of others. Stay weird, my friends. And uh, until next time, peace. Love you all.